Hey, what's going on? It's real. Welcome everybody to episode number 33 of the podcast. I'm joined by my amazing co-host Crimson Shadow and Zafox and to introduce our newest co-host, someone everyone in the NRS scene is familiar with. It's DJT the NRS got himself. DJT, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Rio. Thank you, Brother Rio. <laughs> <laughs> I'm up right now. I'm loving it. Yo, so I'm sure you've been seeing what's going on lately in the whole NRS, Twitter and everywhere. And it's getting kind of crazy because Crimson Shadow and I talked about this like at least a month ago. The whole Guilty Gear situation, we're going to go like, you know, like the game just came out. A lot of people are feeling it, but it's going to happen eventually. That happens to all fighting games where people start, you know, either throwing shit at it or the honeymoon phase phases out and then people start feeling how they really feel about the game what i didn't expect was how it came this quickly like i thought we would be talking about this a year from now but we're literally what like the game came out like a month or so ago right and twitter and everywhere has just been going crazy about people saying oh they don't like the game the game's boring the game has no depth this is watered down the dlc is this and what are your thoughts what are your guys' thoughts on this crimson I mean, you already know that thing because we talked about this and we we actually called it before it happened. But like, the FGC is is in it's like stuck in Groundhog Day right now, right? Like, you can actually predict the cycle. Like, have you guys ever seen a movie and you were like five minutes in it and you were like, I already know what's gonna happen. Mm-hmm. That's literally what's happening right now. Before Get to Get was even released, we were like, all right, let me tell you what's gonna happen. First, people are gonna play the beta and they're gonna be like, dude, it's so deep. It's like it's easy to get into, but like the gameplay is amazing and you can win with any character and like it's perfectly balanced and it's amazing. And then like the first month people are gonna be like, Yeah, you know, I think it's pretty good. You know, maybe like a couple characters are a little strong or whatever, but you know, it's really deep and I love it and it's so different. Right? And then a couple months go by, those top tiers come out. <laughs> People start complaining about the top tier, how this character is too good, soul is too good, can't beat this character, my character sucks, wins the balance patch, you know, but it's still good. And, you know, usually that cycle takes like a year, maybe a year and a half. However, what I did not expect was that we'd be at this point after, what has it been? Guilty Gear Gear Strive came out on June 11th. Yeah, It's not even August 11th yet. So that means we're less than two months into the game's life. We didn't even make it to Evo, and already people are like, yo, this game is shallow. You know, I had fun with it at first, but the whole game is figured out already in month two. So I don't know. Like, even, even by my expectations, I'm still shocked at the fact that people have gotten here this fast. And given that we followed the same path with now Marvel Infinite, DBFZ, Samurai Showdown, Street Fighter V, MK11, and now Guilty Gear. I have to ask, is it the games or is it the community as well? Zyfox, would you like to go ahead? You know me. Uh, I tend to lean towards it being the players, but it's not without fault to the developers. I feel like we've been dumbing down the games steadily for a while now where intricate moves and remember when mk11 first came out they had a system of meter burn where it wasn't just a button it was like you had to memorize each individual uh meter burn button for each special just simple stuff yes i like that just simple stuff like that they started like taking away and making it easier for people to get into and the side effect is that it kind of has a shallow n- nature to the games. Uh, I want to say that that's just a side effect, and that just makes sense for developers to make that decision, right? But as a player, it's up to us to kind of adapt to whatever is given to us. Now, we can definitely, you know, complain or say what we got to say about the game itself and, and point out where things can be better. But, you know, at some point, we're going to have to like what's in front of us. I mean, it, nothing is perfect. It, it, 
a lot of the negativity is centered around people and characters. Their inability to be able to beat characters like Soul or Ram and getting pissed off thinking that the characters are carrying the players and they're not really looking at themselves. They should play the intro to the Strive a little bit more. They gotta reflect on themselves. Sometimes you gotta really get into the lab and train. You know, like, and actually put in the effort to get better at these matchups. Sometimes you gotta do that. And I feel like the majority of the people don't put in the time, have these lofty expectations that they're good at the game, <laughs> and then they get met, and because they have a superiority complex, right? If you think you're superior to other people, and then you're shown not to be superior to other people, all of a sudden you start getting a little defensive. You start getting a little, you know, agitated. And that's where, you know, these outbursts come out of people salting or whatever. But besides just that, uh, it's a side effect of all together, the games being easier, along with players expecting more out of themselves. And it's just... Uh, negative domino effect in the negative direction. Denzel, what's your opinion on this whole situation? <clears throat> oh, man. Uh, me and, you should hear me and Malik. We talk about this shit all the time. What's going on? Um, where do I even start? First off, I, I completely agree with Kenny as far as, uh, like, I understand how you would think, you know, making the game more accessible, watering it down, get more, you know, casuals into the game. But at the same time, you know, if you're somebody who, you know, you've been playing fighting games for a while, you're just like, damn. This is what I, you got to play what you got to play or, you know what I'm saying? You, there is the option of going back to the games you used to play so much if you don't like the new shit. There's still the old games if they're still available. Um, I also agree with Kenny when he was saying that um, how some of these players have this expectation, especially coming in from an older, I mean, not an older, but um, previous title, they were good, like considered top or whatever and shit like that. And... Making a transition, most NRS games, except for like, you know, Injustice, Injustice was pretty legacy, but you know, for the Mortal Kombat, that shit keeps changing. And um, I, I always did like Mortal Kombat with their creativity, but as far as if you're competing, it, it can be difficult because one game, you know, you, you might be more rushed down heavy, for example, MKX, and then you come to Injustice, it might be slowed down, like the meter burn is different, the meter's different, the way the stages, it's a whole lot. But, um, yeah, there's just so many angles to think about, like, I, and what you were just saying about, what Rio was saying about Guilty Gear, and people were talking about, um, how they're bored of the game, and then this whole thing with Sonic Fox. He was just saying how he's not feeling the game anymore, and some people were saying they were following him, and some people were just like, just enjoy the game, shut the hell up. And it's just a whole lot of <laughs> crazy shit going on on Twitter. And, you know, with the whole COVID situation, people just have more time to be on the Internet, and this shit gets too crazy. Like, y'all need to go to work or school or something. <laughs> Somebody help. <laughs> and, yeah, I'm just, I'm just, uh, sorry, Crimson, go ahead. No, I was going to say, here's my thing. Guilty Gear has been around since 1998. It is now 2021. That means this game franchise has been around for more than 20 years. Where were all these people for the last 20 years? You know where they were? They weren't playing it because it was hard, right? The whole time, the real Guilty Gear players have been playing their game. They've been doing their stuff. Everyone else was playing all these mainstream games. 
Now, why does everyone want to play Guilty Gear now? Well, the reason they want to play it now is because they made it accessible to these same players that are complaining right now, right? And everybody jumped on board. They were all like, yo, this Guilty Gear, yo, looks good. It's kind of like, it's easier for me to pick up. I can get into it. It's actually really fun. So I'm going all out, man. This is going to be my game. Fast forward to two months later, when some top players are like, eh, I don't know. Then those same people are like, see, it's not deep enough, so I'm not going to play it. You know what I mean? And so it's like, we we gotten to the point where the FDC works on feds. The hardcore Guilty Gear players have an issue with it because they're like, well, you guys all wanted to play this game because it was easier to play, and now you all got into it, and now you're complaining because it's easier to play. So it's like, what actually makes people happy? Is it better to just keep games niche and just have them be hard or have them be difficult or have them be whatever? And if that's the case, why do we keep praising these games like Dragon Ball that are easy for people to get into only to burn them to the ground like half a year or a year later? And that's what I'm trying to figure out. I feel like I have a solution to that a little. Just one quick, hear me out. It really is simple. A simple formula. It's everything has to be put into the flow state. So you have to make gamers want to be uh, have a challenge, enough of a challenge, plus enough fun to get people to play the game for long periods of time and keep everything new because you got to compete with every other game out there. And I feel like somewhere along the lines of the development they they just don't hit those areas in in people's brains like at all you know some it's either too much or it's not enough and it's been like that since like the dawn like what was the best fighting game ever made is there a consensus best fighting game ever made uh i mean it's debatable i would personally say smash melee through preference but it's debatable i mean look at the i would agree like to be honest with you, Smash Melee is like up there. I'm not even in front. Like I'm not even melee, a melee player or like a Smash player because it takes so much freaking skill to do that, like just to play the game. But at the same time, melee wasn't as popular as it is now, back when it was playing. So. Yeah, competitively back then it was smaller, now it's the biggest it's ever been. But one thing Melee does do well, even though it's by an accident, is Melee is very good at bridging the gap in having both casuals and competitive players satisfied. And I feel like this is probably what some fighting games are missing nowadays. And I'm not sure how they could do it, because with Melee, there's so many ways to play it casually and for fun. You don't have to know how to do all these just frames of Fox to play Fox. You could play Fox with your friends, turn items on, play in stages, have fun, right? In these new games, there's not really something like that. Maybe they could use a different game mode or have modes that are more accessible that allow you to input things easier. While as if you play competitive, then characters have execution like just frame strength or something. I don't really know what it is. Is it really execution? Is that really the missing factor that makes games fun? Is is that really the key ingredient that some I people are really the, asking for? It's the nuance in it. Like... The fact that you can play Smash casually and still have as just as much fun as when you play it like super competitive in the same game system without having to change anything. Because remember, items and, f- and that is, is all fun, but they're still going into the main game to play. And then, then there's something that you can do as a be- as a better player that maybe the casuals don't know to be you know to show a skill gap. That's what's needed in these games, and it's very hard to do that. I don't know why. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I think they may, need, they, they may need to make a separate mode. Like, let's say for MK12, right? Or we'll use MK11. If they had two different modes, let's say they had like a casual mode and a competitive mode, but the game actually changes when you play competitive mode in terms of how you actually play the game. For example, let's say in order to do Cetrion String 213, in casual mode, you would just input it 213. But if you were playing competitive mode, 213, the last hit would, would require just frame input, meaning you would have to practice, play the character a lot. To be able to do that string consistently in combos or in general to keep her safe on block and push people back. What do you guys think about that? What if they separated the games like pretty hardcore in terms of if you play competitive, That's, things get difficult, links get hard, there's executions, there's just frames. You see how melee doesn't have to do that? 
even though you're taking away items, even when you remove every single thing, they could play the standard game. And in, in the game itself, that's what we're aiming for. We're aiming for something to, like the system game, the game system allows you to be a newcomer and have fun with the game. Do the specials, do whatever, but then there's a nuance to it where if you dive deeper and you combine these moves or maybe you do something else that takes skill and practice to accomplish over time that can separate you be and, and like a new person based on that, that's going to have the happy medium everyone's looking for. But it's yeah. almost impossible. Oh yeah, I kind of see what you mean now. You mean that someone can pop in Smash Melee, whether you're casual or competitive, you could play with friends, play for fun, Fox, but if you play competitively, you can do all these high-tech advanced stuff exactly. if you put the work into it. That's what you mean, right? Exactly. So maybe something like that would be like, let's say you play Cetron, and she would have to have different versions of every move. She would have to have a move that you would be able to alter if you know how to with depth and execution and then the standalone move so maybe what if 213 was how it worked now but a little bit more unsafe but then if you did 213 and you timed it perfectly it would make it currently safe how it is now maybe something like that that way if you're playing with people and you put in the working ground with the character you can do things that'll make your character stand out more than other players with strings and moves what do you think about that i mean Anything is up on the table at this point that they haven't yet tried, but I do like your idea. Um, adding some type of ex executional barrier is always something that they've tried. I wonder if they could just be creative. You know, if they could sort of sit down, they have their minds together, you know, they put together something that they can make where it's like what I thought Guilty Gear Strive was. And to me, it is this. It's a game where it's very close to that where it takes just enough execution to make it interesting and make you want to get good at it. And it has a simplicity of being able to play the game normally and still have fun. But there is some, you know, obviously it's not perfect. And I think that's the that's the issue that's going on with Strive. Yeah, it takes a lot of work to make things work in a way to satisfy both crowds. Like I said, Melee is like a crazy accident that somehow checks both lists perfectly like you could play with anybody you could play melee with anybody it doesn't matter how good they are and they could play a character and have fun but then you can also play the game super competitively and to the casual players when they see a player play competitively they're looking at something they're like wow look at that it's like art they're doing something differently but i can't put my tongue on what it is exactly it just looks like their character is functioning differently than mine i want to know how to do that so then they go into it and dive into it and there's all these different mechanics and depth and all this there, I'm sure there's a way to apply this to other fighting games. It's just, it's, it's a very difficult concept to grasp because, like I said, a melee was completely unintentional and by accident. So, in order to harvest that and create it into something that'll be an actual game feature, but make sure it's not, you know, like I guess unfair, but I'm not sure how they would do it. You know what I'm thinking? What? Do you think? Smash, uh, like people want to get into it, or they keep staying strong as a community because they just never stop playing it and promoting it and streaming it, or is it more of a, I don't know, like because of the game? I don't know. I don't even know how to how I want to ask this question, but do you think? I'm just making it more simple. Do you think... Uh, you think the game is carried by the community, or do you think the game carries the community? Yeah, yeah, there we go. I, I think it's both. That's what I, I think to they have a game that has potential to be really good, which a lot of games do, and they have a community behind it that likes the game. Like, if you notice, the difference between the Smash community and the MK community is that the Smash community has a lot of players that are more loyal and they're very passionate about the game and they're willing to learn and break it down see they don't care that melee is broken and imbalanced they don't care that there's only like five to eight viable characters tops and that you know the game has all this jank and all these bugs and all these hitbox issues they like the game for what it is because they're drawn to the characters in the game in general so they put up with what the, the flaws that the game have and in turn they attract a lot of players with similar mindset that grows the game overall so while they have this community that's always growing and attracting more players that like the game and they're all gaining more knowledge and getting better at the game 
we're kind of like doing the opposite like instead of us telling people hey man you know yeah jackie's busted but maybe we can find ways to beat her like players do in melee with fox we're telling them no nah, this game is bad because jackie's broken and you shouldn't play it because only balanced fighting games should be taken seriously meanwhile Balanced fighting games don't exist. That's not a thing. Have you guys ever played a fighting game that was perfectly balanced? I never have. Not even Dive Kick. Is I mean, yeah. Balanced. Dive Kick went longer than Strive before people started roasting it to the ground, which is crazy if you think about it. But I think, guys, like, hot take. I don't even know if it's a hot take. First of all, that game doesn't exist. Period. Like, Zyfox, I hear what you're saying. You mean the balanced game, right? But this game doesn't exist. And the way you know is because all the games that people talk about from yesteryear, where they're like, oh, man, that game was so much fun. It was this and that. All those games are deeply flawed as fighting games. They're deeply flawed. Marvel, deeply flawed. MK9, deeply flawed, right? These games are crazy, but they were fun. And the thing is... The community now will not allow that game to happen because they want a game that's both as crazy as those games, but also doesn't have flaws. And the reason why is because this is the generation of complaint. This isn't the generation of, hmm, this is hard to get around. Let me go in the lab for six months or eight months or whatever and exploit every possible advantage that I can find in this matchup to maybe even it up to like a 4-6 or a 5-5. Five, five. This is the generation of fix it for me. If you don't fix it for me, the game sucks and I'm not going to play it. Right? Like, this, this game that people are waiting for, where it's like, it's super great for casuals, but it's also great for experienced players, and it's super balanced, and there's no mechanics that people think are like unfair or would keep them from playing the game. This game doesn't exist. And that is why you see the hypocrisy that's happening right now, where people were playing MKX, and they were like, this is the worst Mortal Kombat ever made. They should have just made MK9 again. When this game dies, it's going to be a laughing stock, and people are never going to play it again. It's so unbalanced, it's this and that. All right? Now we have MK11, and all, everyone's like, yo, MKX, it was so much fun. The truth <laughs> is, they wouldn't allow that game to live when we had it. When it was the game that we were playing, they roasted it to the ground. NRS, worst fighting game dev ever. It's so unbalanced. Everything is so crazy. There's all these 50-50s and stuff like that. Like, how could they make this game? So the point that I'm making is, I think the FGC, as it stands right now, is in too much of a complaint mode to actually allow this game to be built. And if we're going to get a game back that's fun to play, we're going to have to relax as a community and actually be willing to play it to evolve with the game and to let the game evolve. If we don't, we're going to burn every new game to the ground within the first year and always be hopping to the next big thing. Look, here's the bottom line. Denzel, your question. If, if our community, if NRS community were to take on Melee, if Melee was given to us, to our community, we would kill Melee instantly. You want to know why? Because our community would cry. This is so dumb. Why can't, my, why can't Mitchers compete? I want to play Bowser. Why can't Bowser compete? This is so dumb. Can't play my character. This is stupid. This character can just do this and this. Wow, why is this top tier Marth so easy to play? Etc. That's the difference. There's mindset. In order for a game and, and the community to, to succeed, they need to both be on the same page. You need to have a game that can be played competitively, which MK11 can. And you need to have a community that is willing to learn the game and complement the game with their community. And sadly, on the community part, even though we have a lot of good players that are helping the community, there's a lot of them, we're they're sadly overshadowed by people that just love to tear down the game and rip it apart and say it's bad it's happened with mk9 it's happened with injustice it's happened with mkx it's happening with mk11 and it will happen to the next game if we don't do something about it it's going to be a never-ending cycle and i don't know about you guys but i'm kind of getting tired of being stuck in this time loop of reliving the same experiences every time a new game comes out like it's very tiring that's why this concept of shilling is very troublesome because some people are like, yeah, say what, what it will say, what it is. If the game is bad, the game is bad. And if you say otherwise, you're shill. If you stay positive about your game, have a positive mindset, regardless of how the game is, and you try to actually get good at the game, 
and then you become a top player and you set an example, people won't be so drawn to shitting on the game because their top players are putting it, putting up and quote unquote shutting up, right? Like they're not complaining 24 seven on Twitter or on, on their Twitch stream about characters and, and how bad the game is. If the game is bad, there's constructive criticism to be had. There's a time and place for that. Sure. But as soon as you get to the point where you're just consistently criticizing a game that is really up to, it's really subjective as to the things that you're criticizing in the first place. Like it just gets to this back and forth between whether you like the game or not. And you just create this like war mindset. Like you're just like, you know, on edge all the time, like relax guys, <laughs> like play the game. If you like it, play it. If you don't like it, don't play it. It's pretty much that yeah. simple. Right. And also it's okay to dislike a game or enjoy it. My point is a lot of this criticism is usually made by people that don't like the game. Here's the truth. When you don't like a game, it doesn't matter really what changes because for the game to change to be something, it's not like, for example, MKX. For some reason, people thought that MKX, the last patch, was going to be this overhaul that was going to change how MKX played. Like, it was going to turn into not MKX for some reason. Why would that happen? The developers made MKX to play a certain way. So when they patched the game, MKX is not all, all, all of a sudden going to play like MK2 or, or Injustice 2. You know, it's not going to change into a different game. It's still going to have a similar meta that may tone things down. But ultimately, a lot of this constructive criticism, I think, is it's not genuine because it's made by people that don't like the game. And let's be honest here, a lot of it, when you read what people say, like Jade is broken, nerfed down too, the game has no zoning, this and that, that's not criticism. That's just people with a biased opinion that aren't thinking very clearly. I mean, Denzel, what do you think? Oh, man. We could just talk about so many different things off this. But first, going back to, I think, Rio, I think you touched on it. But I think you also touched on it, Crimson, talking about just some of the newer, I feel like some of the newer players or just a newer player base, every time a newer game comes out, I just feel like, I don't know, we're just drawing more and more people that, complain on the internet and i don't know if it's because more people because i remember there was the good old tym days i'm not on tym anymore but i feel like everybody transitioning over to like twitter more and shit and it's just i don't know like i'm trying to think about why there's so much complaining is it just the newer players, is it because of what games uh, the newer player base is coming from? Is it just the generation some of these players were born in? Is it... I know exactly what it is. Answer me. It's a... Just answer me. Shit. <laughs> it's, a, it's a culture change. It's a, it's a culture change. Basically, the culture now has slowly been changing into what it's become for the NRS scene at least. See, back then, during MK9, TYM days, and so on, there were a lot of people that complained and said the game was shit, this and that. But, for every person that said that, there would be another player, like me or whoever, saying, no, you're wrong, this game is good, you can play it this way, counter, it's okay if this is not balanced or whatever. But nowadays, now, if you go fast forward 10 years now, or even a few years uh, back in time, it's slowly regressed backwards and more of those players that would stand up for the game slowly stopped doing it or disappearing one by one and each one of them would get replaced by 10 people that didn't like the game that were very vocal about it now if you go to tym and even say anything about yo i really like mk11 this and that then the game has potential you're, you're just gonna get dogpiled people will tell you you're dumb you're stupid bring back mkx like it's just it's a huge culture shift and i and i it worries me for the next nrs game whether it's injustice 3 or mk12 because I'm going to feel bad for those new players that are new to the scene. They happen to like MK12. Whether MK12's meta is all zoning or rushdown or whatever it is. And they're just going to get attacked by this evil culture that's been just brewing to hate everything if it's not perfect. But no game has ever been perfect, ever. That's why it's very odd to me that players are expecting something that they've never experienced. They've, like, what games have these players played? 
where the balance is so impeccable. The depth is so in infinite, and they just want NRS to replicate that. What have they played? Because I've never seen a fighting game like that. Well, they said it was Virtue Fighter, but when they brought Virtue Fighter back, it died competitively in like a month. And here's the thing. Speaking about that, what if I told you guys this? I want you guys' honest opinion on this. Let's say MK9 was remastered next year, the same exact game, just with fixed netcode, and rebought back next year. What do you guys think would actually happen when this current culture and community gets their hands on it? Do you guys think they're going to play and be like, yo, depth, yo, hype, yo, combos, or do you think something else is going to happen? They're going to um, say that for like the first month, and then they're going to go to bitching. <laughs> I personally hope they don't remaster MK9 just because the culture right now would tear that game apart. They would absolutely shred it, and MK9 would sadly go down in history as a horrible, imbalanced, joke, broken game, which is sad because, like I said, I don't really truly believe that there's any bad game. I think every game has pros and cons, and they're all like a preference of what you like. Some people prefer a certain playstyle or some elements of the game. That's why, you know, some people like Tekken, some people like Street Fighter, some people like MK, and, and etc. It's not really that a game is just objectively garbage bad and nothing's good about it, you know? Yeah, I mean, honestly, I, I don't think it's possible. Like, getting back to Guilty Gear, I don't think it's possible that the game is as bad as people are claiming it is. I really don't. And even if it was, like, we have to consider that none of the fighting games that we're talking about and none of the fighting games that you guys have loved and played were ever great on release. Like, none of them, right? There's a reason why people play Super Turbo. Super Turbo is what, like, the fifth or sixth version of Street Fighter Two. Who do you know that's like, yo, let's go back and play vanilla Street Fighter Two? Nobody. And there's a reason for that. Because the game that it became is not the same game that it was at launch. And if you look at every other game that people are playing, it's all the same. Vanilla Street Fighter 4 is not what Street Fighter 4 became. Right? Even MK9, there are some things that were so drastically broken on release that it became a much different game once it was a few patches in. Right? Like, the final version of that game is not what it started as. And so it's like, you know, as a community, we've got to be willing to give games time to grow. And it's supposed to be like, if you call yourself a member of a community for a game, like if you're like, yo, I'm in the Strive community, getting back to the Melee community, you should be there for that game. You've got to give it time to grow. We're a month and a half in. If you're dropping a game a month and a half in, to me, you're not going to be able to be committed to any game because you don't have any patience. Given that almost every fighting game that we've loved has had to evolve over months, two years, or even like Street Fighter V, which is really just hitting its stride now after five, six years, then if you're the type of person that's going to quit a game within a month and a half, you're never going to be satisfied with any game. And that's my hot take. I think most of these people will honestly not be satisfied with any game. I think some of them never intended to play, to be a Guilty Gear Strive player. They intended to jump on the flavor of the month thing and as soon as any top player gives them any excuse where they can, like, you know, get their parachute and jump <laughs> off the plane, then they jump off. Because then they never have to struggle through anything difficult. They never have to play through any bad matchups, right? They never have to get over the, the parts that take people years to learn in the meta. They can just say, yeah, it wasn't good. Listen, Sonic said, you know, they're not going to play it, so I'm not going to play it either. And wait for the next game that's going to save the FGC and then jump off that shit, too. So... I think if we're going to get back to enjoying games, like, we got to get back to really sticking with them, like, being willing to let them evolve and being willing to get through stuff that's difficult. Otherwise, our community is going to be, like, a mile wide and an inch deep. Yeah, well, it's also hard to reason with something when you dislike something. Like, for example, if I don't like Third Strike, like, let's just say I don't like the game, right? I dislike it. And I'm following some news about it or seeing some top players' opinion about it, and they say... Oh, Yun's top tier. He doesn't lose anybody. He beats everybody. Me, because I, I automatically don't like the game already, a tweet or, or an opinion like that is going to stick to me because it's going to be like, oh, I now have a reason why I don't like the game because Yun is top tier. Look, he doesn't lose to anybody. This game is... I don't like the game because Yun. And I feel like too many people do that. Too many people, when they dislike a game, instead of being like, guys, I don't like this fighting game because maybe these, these opinions, whatever, and my personal preference, I'm just not into it. 
most of them never do that and they never take accountability for they're just not into the game you know so they look for reasons they look for people to say things anything it could be anything hitbox issue here this character being top tier this not being fair and then they instantly cling to that and it sticks to them and they just keep repeating it and spreading it and spreading it i think that that's one of the problems is when you don't like something you're unconsciously just looking for any reason as to why you don't like it and that's why when you come across opinions you just grab them and you stick them and you just repeat them and i mean it's also there's certain things that it's just really hard to get both of them at once right like getting back to mkx and mk11 like if you want a game that's super crazy and really wacky and there's lots of like really strange tech to find and like glitchy things and stuff like that and like crazy damaging stuff that you can dig up it's hard for that to be this super balanced like patient you know like footsies only kind of game and if you notice people go back and forth really fast on what they say they like and they don't like right as soon as they're like dude there are too many 50 50s there's too much mix there's too much offense you take it out and then people are like dude why, why is this game so boring <laughs> you know like I want to mix people, and all I can do is, is walk back and forth and, and, and poke and strike throw and whip punish, and, you know, I want to hit people with crazy setups and stuff like that, all right? Are the same thing, like, with matchups. People are like, listen, I want to be able to use my character against every other character in the game. I don't have any 7-3s, 8-2s, anything like that, right? But yeah. I want these crazy archetypes where every character plays completely different. This character is flying all over the place, and, and this character is super slow but super strong. And it's like, you cannot, you can't have both. If you want characters that are wildly different from each other, you're going to have to accept the bad matchups and you might have to counterpick. Or you might just be a struggle character and have to live with it and have to dig into some matchups like we used to do in order to get better when they're hard and just wear it as a badge of honor. But I think you can't get everything at once. And I think if we're expecting everything at once, we're, not, we're just not going to get it. Yeah, also, come on, we have to get something straight here. Denzel Zavox, we all know what it means when someone says they want the game to be more balanced. Usually that just means the people they want the character to be top tier. That's usually what it is. Of course, it's always like, been like that. <laughs> I mean, from what I'm seeing, I don't know what you guys are seeing, but it seems like offline is, is back and pretty much like more popular than ever. Even for games like MK11, where they just ended support, um... I'm seeing a lot of good stuff happening offline. Like, there was, um, what was it, the Mash House tournament in Texas? Denzel, you were there, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. The Mash How was it? How many people were there? Oh, uh, I want to say it was like, I don't know, like 80, 90, nice. something like that. Almost, I want to say it was almost. Yeah, maybe like 80, 90. I didn't really count, but yeah, it was a decent size for a regional. It was at a little uh, gaming cafe and shit. They got like the all the like booths and shit and uh, PlayStations and they had the food, drinks and shit. But there was also uh, outside of the venue, there was a bunch of places to eat. So I really liked that. And the airport was only like 15 minutes away. Hotel was only like ten minutes away from the venue. You could walk to the venue. It's pretty good, to, but it's hot as shit. Up that Uber, but uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that 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 event, man, just playing offline. I didn't give a shit if I went zero and two. I just loved, but I ain't going zero and two. Fuck that. But anyway, <laughs> but anyway, yeah. Um, <laughs> That offline experience, yeah, that shit. That's that's the type of experience I feel like that also helped to keep the community together. Um, it's just some type of event going on. So I feel like that's another huge, going back to what we were just talking about uh, with a bunch of complaining and shit on the internet. Another reason I feel like that that happens too much and too often, obviously because of the whole Corona situation, but just no events because of that. So motherfuckers are all playing online. Is pretty much what it is right now. Is online, online. So the community, like you were saying, Rio, the culture has changed because you know it's more online now. Like it's 
It's like we went from in person, now we're in the future, head ass, and it's all online. Can't come in contact type shit. Like, it's it's crazy to think about. It hasn't even been that long shit since I came into the community. And, um, yeah, it's crazy just how long, how much 10 years can, like, shift the whole fighting game culture. Like, who knows what it's going to be like in the next 10 years. Honestly, I got to talk to some more OGs about this shit because I need to. Yeah, man, time does a lot. It shifts a lot. Like, I'm curious about, to like, see where the NRC scene will the be. Culture. Yeah, I'm very curious to see how the NRC will be 10 years from now. Like, what will it be? Will we be 10 times more complaining? Will we actually have this, like, massive community with, like, hundreds of top players? It, it's really interesting to think about that. To look, like, 10 years in the future and see, like, where the community's going to head. And, you know, how we're going to treat the games. I think... Uh, yeah. You know, I have a question for you guys based on that. Because I think it's an interesting point. Um... But before I ask, I just want to say, aside from Mash House, like, shout out to Viz. Like, he ran a tournament, BGX Retribution, in Philly, with Gur Dragon, a bunch of people were there. I think they had, like, 60 people there. And then uh, Darth Arma just ran an event called MK and J offline in New Jersey. There were a bunch of people there. But between all these events, right, like, Mash House, BGX, MK and J, one people the one thing that people said more than anything else was they were happy to be able to go and like meet people and play with each other, you know, to like experience it, like chop it up with people, like run casuals in person and stuff like that. And so I want to ask you guys, based on Denzel's point, do you think that not having an online scene for most of Melee's life actually kind of helped that scene keep it together you know the fact that since they couldn't play online they had to go and kind of like whatever you call it like hang out with each other fellowship with each other like offline to build bonds of like actual friendship and stuff like that in addition to the game that they were playing and do you think that actually helped keep some of those communities together in ways that maybe they wouldn't have otherwise oh for sure because all those players you know you get to leave an impressionable mark on all the newer players entering the the community and they'll learn from you and if they're you know if they're trying to be stand-up citizens they're not over there bitching and complaining about characters non-stop you know and you're just in that social setting where you're trying to you know the competitive fire is high you're just focused on getting better and better and you're not really trying to focus on not being better and better which is complaining about characters and stupidity and that leaves you know a ripple effect and then everybody gets better. And that's how they've been able to carry it this entire time. And that's what we're lacking. Yeah. Rio, Denzel, what do you guys think? Yes, definitely. Like, uh, the best part of having a community is exactly what you said. is having this, these offline tournaments, events, where people can go there. You can meet people with the same interests as you. Play the games you guys both enjoy. Learn things from each other. Play the game without having to worry about any lag spiking or DDoSing and, you know, none of that crap. You just get to play offline, enjoy the game, learn. And that's, in my opinion, the best thing about a community. And that's why Melee, for being able to thrive offline for, what, two decades is massive. Their tournaments have just been growing and growing. Imagine being stuck only playing a fighting game online, never being able to talk to people, meet them in person, and just... It's like you're almost playing against AI and, you know, you play against a character, it's, it, you run into something frustrating, it bothers you, you really haven't got to want to talk about it, you get mad at the game, blame the character, and it just, I think just strictly playing online with a game is by itself a little bit more negative than being able to play offline and experience the game. Wow, that, that's an interesting way to um, look at it. Um, it's almost like you're playing a computer because you don't get that face-to-face interaction. You don't get, uh, you don't get the feel like what the fuck is going on. You can see it, but you don't know what's really going on with who you're playing and what's going on with them. It's almost like you're getting cheated out of the full experience of like a competitive experience. You don't get the full package playing an online tournament instead of playing offline in front of people and you can literally hear somebody behind you 
Like, you don't get that online. There's no way to get that shit online at all. So, yeah, offline, that I feel like that really helps keep a uh, fighting game community alive because without offline, I mean, the games can survive, but how long can they survive is the question. Can any of the newer games stay alive long enough over time? Like, I don't know. We, we're just going to have to find out what, what's going to happen with, with time. Time will tell. Who knows? Is, is the fighting game community overall just kind of the competitive side of it um, as newer and newer games coming up? Uh, are they going to be able to survive in the future? Or are they going to become more... Like, as more and more new fighting games come out, are they going to become more, uh, I don't know, like, just accessible type, where they're not even, like, what we, like, growing up playing fighting games recognize as fighting games? I mean, Denzel, you gotta look at the whole picture. Like, right now with MK11, like, the mechanic flaw is blocking. I know a lot of, a lot of competitive players say that they just like it, this and that, but if you go to read what the casuals say about falls blocking... They don't like it because they say they can't do it. It's too hard to do. So this is where things get tricky. If you're NRS, you're like, damn, do I listen to the 1% of players saying that it may be too good? Or do I listen to the 99% saying they just almost never use it or never see it in their level of play because it's just it's hard to do. You know, for someone that's not a high level player, something like false blocking requires timing, requires knowing how to have good defense, you know? And that's something you learn through experience or playing a game a lot. What do you think they're going to do for the next game? Like, I, think, I, I hope Flawless Block comes back, but I may not come back because it may be deemed as something that was just difficult for, you know, for no real reason. I think that they should make games harder to play, in my opinion. Like, give a challenge to everything. That's why Dark Souls is so popular is because it's such a challenge to, you know, even beat the game, like, regularly, you know? Let alone, like, all these people start speedrunning it and doing all types of crazy stuff later. But I feel like the dumbing down of all the games for, like, the last 20 or 30 years to appease to casual people that are not in the gaming community has an unintended side effect when it comes to the competitive aspects of any game, right? Because every game is trying to garner as much attention as possible to get as much sales as possible, you know, for their bottom line. But at the same time, if they're starting to be developed for that same reason, you're not going to get these super difficult games that the regular Joe Schmo can't even play. And I think that because of that and because we need that in order to progress everybody to be able to get better and better so that things are not an issue like button mashing and character matchups when we're complaining about character they're, they'll become non-issues when people start getting better at the game and it's everybody just gets taken up a notch because everybody has to catch up to the person that's above them and so forth that's my my way of fixing this but it's probably not reasonable but i don't know i feel like that would cut like a community level up is needed you know <laughs> that way we can stop not focusing on the good aspects of fighting games well, and along those lines, I want to ask you guys too. I feel like, isn't like training wise, isn't that human factor so important in what actually gives you the motivation to get around some of these robots? Because, like, for example, for your case and Denzel, like growing up with Malik, right? Or for all of you guys being at Yomi, you know for sure if you're playing the character you like. And the person you're playing against and literally living with is playing this other character. It might be difficult with you, but you know that person's not going anywhere. And it's not even just like you want to get good at the matchup, but it's like 
I want to beat this person. I want this person to stop beating me and popping off. And I know that when I go to sleep and I wake up tomorrow, this person's still going to be there. So my only choice is to suck it up and figure it out and figure out how to beat them. You know what I mean? Like, isn't that a key component in actually having the motivation to get through some of these things that are more difficult when it comes to training? Yeah, you need to have a couple factors if you want to get better at something. First, you need to like the game and enjoy it. That's step one. If you don't like a game, it's going to be very hard to get better at it. So you need to definitely like it. The second step is you need to have the drive and the motivation to want to become better. Some people like a game, but they don't want to become good at it. Like, for example, I like Dota, but I have no desire to want to be like a top Dota player or pursue that. So I don't do that. So you need to have, yeah, you definitely need to like the game. You need to have the motivation. And it just needs to be something you want to do. And if you have all that, then you have the potential. Then you just need to have good work ethic to do it. You need to be practicing. You need to be training. You need to be playing. You need to be studying your videos. There's a lot that goes into it. It's like, think of it like, it's like a second full-time job almost. Like, you have to take it very seriously. You're not going to improve if you don't take it seriously. Because then you're not, you're not taking yourself seriously. So why would you get better if you're not putting your all real? into it? What's the point when you just go into all that practice you put in, you just get matched up against soul bad guy and then and then just <laughs> see, see here's the thing exactly go ahead here's the thing Zyfox. so every game has top tiers and getting into fighting games or any competitive game for the most part you have to learn how to play against top tiers it doesn't matter what game you're playing if you're playing umk3 you're gonna have to play against cabal because he's the most played character if you play mortal kombat 2 guess what you're gonna play against melina every single match because she's the you know she's the best character so with that knowledge that you know these are the top tier characters. These these are the characters that give people the best chance to win. You have two options. One, you can play the top tier character or play one of the top tiers. Two, you could grind the matchup and get very knowledgeable on how to fight them through experience, which will give you a better chance to beat them. Those are the matchups you should be grinding a lot. You should be in, in MK11, you should be grinding a lot against Jackie, Cetron, Liu King, Joker, etc. Because those are the most common tournament characters you're gonna run run into when you enter because people want to win, right? I mean, there's so a third you just option, have... though. The third option is just give up like most people do. <laughs> yeah, but see, I don't, I don't consider that because that's not improving. That's just going down I, the wrong I, path. I, I well, and I, yeah, but... I feel like that team atmosphere helps a lot with that, right? Like, if you got a team, a clan, or whatever, or just a local scene, and you got a Jackie player in your local scene, like, you're going to play that matchup because you don't want to go and get bodied. Even if you lose, you want it to be good. And you want to get the best of them because you know when you show up to your local or whatever, like that dude's going to be there with the Jackie, right? And it's like, that's how everyone gets better. Versus on the internet, if you're like, like I've seen some players be like, yeah, like on Slayer stream, some players will come in and be like, yeah, you know, I'm down to play, but uh, don't put me versus any Jackies, <laughs> you know? It's like, yo, if that's your... Yeah, well, those players are not trying to improve at all. Yeah, if that's your matchup, then it's like, when you go to tournament, you don't get to choose who you play against. You know what I mean? Like, how are you going to do with that? So I feel like, however we can, even if it's online, if we can get back to building that like kind of team atmosphere, like maybe that'll help people get through these kinds of games. Because other than that, in my opinion, yeah, other than that, I don't think people would be able to deal with the stuff that they're asking for. Dude, so, how are they gonna? Oh no, go ahead, Denzel. So, man. That's... There's just so many angles off of this. Okay. Um, first off, I was just going to say uh, what Crimson was just talking about with the, having the team, having somebody to like kind of play with. Online, now, is it, be, is it the online um, community? Is it? Because you don't have that face to face, why people don't feel like they can try and level up, or is it just because the community overall is just toxic online and you can't really improve in that type of environment? Like what? That's it. And it's definitely a person by person case. Yeah, yeah. Some people will only play you if you beat them because they want to beat you, and some people will not play if you play a certain character like if you play jade they're out they don't care they're not they're not trying to play against that shit they're trying to play a real fighting game but it really depends yeah it's a person by person case 
it's hard to get better at fighting games, right? When the person that's better than you is complaining about the same shit that you would complain about at your level. That's the issue. The top players or people who are even close to being top, if they interact with people who are, you know, not as good as them, haven't put the time in as them, and they're complaining too, what's the point? You're not even as good as this person, and they're giving up. You know, it has to be a community-wide thing. And it starts with the leadership of the top players and the best, you know, the most known players throughout the community spreading positivity, not trying to be shills because it doesn't matter. Like, (laughs) right? It's not about being shills. It's about spreading positivity and trying to have fun playing the game. And there's criticism to be given, sure. I'm not saying don't say anything, but (laughs) it should be constructive and it should be to move forward, not to bitch and complain and then give up. Yeah, it doesn't necessarily have to be pos- positivity, it just has to be knowledge. Like, for example, it's, like Zafox said, it's definitely a, a, like, trickling down effect when someone at the top tiers is saying, yo, Jackie broke, ban Jackie, ban Jackie, ban, and it's like, wait, what is going on, ban Jackie? You guys remember that? Like, I know we've done a lot of episodes earlier where every episode was like yo jackie broke need to be nerfed this and that but the thing is once you condition all these people like zafuck said that are at a level and skill a lot lower than you and they hear you saying ban jackie she's broke nerf her then you're gonna be like wait i don't have to play the game or get good at it because ban jackie she's broke you know yep. i'll just wait for a patch and if that never happens well the game's not worth playing and then I'm just the thing is the like game. no matter how top tier character is yeah <laughs> no matter how top tier character is there's always something you're able to learn or do better or improve your game against it doesn't matter what game it is i mean if we were discrediting people on mk9 for winning with Cyrax, Cabal, Kenshi, Sonya, etc. By late 2012 or 2013, we would have had to discredit literally every major for the game. Like, we were. It would have been no fun a lot because everyone was playing those characters, you know? Or in me- Melee, if they discredited people for winning with Fox and stuff like that, like, no one would ever get any props, you know? So, kind of like getting back to points that we were making, I feel like it's not just how perfect the game is, but it's like, you have to make your fun also, you know? And you have to find reasons with whatever the state that the game is in to have fun with it and find a reason to compete. And I think if we can do that, we can probably live with a lot of different types of games and let them evolve over time. If we can't do that, we're going to get stuck in in a loop of kind of like killing these games as soon as they come out without really giving them time to breathe. Yeah, and here's the thing. Look, the next Enter's game coming out, whether it's Injustice 3 or MK12, there's going to be top-tier characters. And instead of us all collectively complaining about them and saying the game is bad and no one should play it and it's garbage, why don't we figure out a way to beat them? Like, for example, in the beginning of, of MK11, when I was maining Eren, and he was debatable, like, best character in the game, I was, even though I was playing him and I didn't have to do this, I was making videos telling people what to do against Eren, how to play him, telling people, like, hey, man, if you hold up here if you think i'm gonna do this and i hit you with my back two string if you immediately break away you can full combo him hey if you do this here in the corner when i do acid setup off this string which i usually go for anti-breakaway you can get up quickly and then you're actually plus and then you get a strike throw on me that i have to block things like that you know just helping expand people's knowledge so they understand how to play against the top tier a little bit better than they did before you know it's all about improving people so because once everyone gets better then the skill level by itself will start rising naturally if you think about it you know yeah, for sure. And if we're at the point where we're complaining about throws and pokes, we're not going to get there. <laughs> yeah, and I'm, really quickly, I, I want to touch on a few things. I want your guys' opinion before we close off this uh, this episode. So let's let's talk about some of the most complained things about MK11, and let's see if there's a ways around it. Like, for example, number one, the most complained about thing in MK11, which you see in every stream, every tournament, usually when you read stuff, the zoning. People cannot stand the zoning. They think it's just a cheesy way it's there people aren't actually fighting you they're cheaping you out of wins and it's not fun so i want to ask denzel who's probably like the best person with patience at getting in on zoning denzel how do you deal with the zoning in mk11 like do you have any tips or strategies that could help someone get better like let's say you're playing it's a jade she has the low projectile the rang like that bitch is trying to spam you out this game how do you play against that um jade um i mean there's a lot of angles we can go off so just dealing with the low, um, what I do 
Um, well, I'm experienced at it, but what I would look for if you're trying to get better at um, getting around her zoning, the first thing you need to learn is, okay, I mean, I with the low projectile, you can pretty much see her swinging it. Um, so there's a few things you could do. You could, Obviously, you could jump over the projectile if you have the reactions for it. You could simply just block so you don't take any damage. Um, flawless block is an option, but I know that's hard for some people. But flawless block is an option to take less chip. Uh, you can short hop it if you even if you got that type of finesse. You can short hop it. Uh, if you have a advancing special move, you can do. Like, for example, Liu Kang's flying kick. Not everybody has Liu Kang's flying kick, but that's just an example. Uh, or if you have a jumping special, you could jump and do your special move to get over that. Yeah, like a Reigns air dive move? Yeah, or, you know, if you're, or if you're within Jade's uh, back two range, that's like the sweet spot. Okay, so Jade's back two, um, she can't cancel it if it whips. So... I know some Jade players, they like to throw out the back two. Um, but if this whiffs in the neutral, like, pretty much most of the characters in the game, they can get a full dash in, punish, or if you have a projectile to keep it simple. Uh, you could probably even get a jump, but that would be, like, some super crazy timing. But, yeah, Jade's back two. It can't be special canceled on whip, so if you're kind of ducking, also you can duck her shadow kick, which some Jays like to throw that out there sometimes. Then you have the air, uh, the air projectile. So the first, th there's a certain timing you have to lab it, obviously, but you could block it, which is the most simple thing to do. But she's plus, so she might do something crazy. You can actually jump over both of the options. There's a certain timing. You can actually jump over both options. But that's that requires some lab work. That lab work. Uh, <laughs> you got to hit that lab for that. You're not going to just be able to learn that on the fly. You got to learn that lab, lab time on that. And uh, what else? I mean, yeah, down four, obviously. Oh, my God, that down four. You're going to have to be dealing with that. But. There's some options even around that bullshit, too, if you're willing to deal with it. Because it, it low profiles a lot of moves. But, I mean, if you have a read on it, you know, you can do short hop, which is crazy. But it, it can work. Short hop, um, jump, which uh, that's probably the worst option because she recovered down two. <laughs> but it's, it's an option. You can do, like, wait for the down four. And then kind of dash in, but you got to be quick because you're probably not going to get punished, obviously. But you could at least close that space when she whiffs it. You whiff and then you move in. Or if you're really trying to play some mind games, you let it whiff a few times. Just, just let them like kind of auto match that shit until you find a timing, like kind of playing like, what is that? Like some, sh what's that timing? Like, uh, Almost like you're trying to get into the uh, double dutch and the jump rope and shit, and then she's throwing out the down four and shit. You're like, all right, wait for it. You come in, you come out, you come in, you're like, all right, shit, I'm in there. <laughs> okay, we're getting technical now. <laughs> but, See, this, uh, this J talk is interesting because when you get down to it, like, th like, I just realized one of the reasons why jade is so hated right now and probably the most hated game currently and i'm uh, most hated character currently in mk11 is because fundamentally jade is like a traditional fighting game character like she forces a lot of people to play her game she, she slows down the match she has zoning she has decent footsie buttons with down four she stops jumping like she just forces a player if you're not like a fighting game player you're not a competitive player and you're just playing a game for fun when you go against Jade, she's almost like a wall. You play her and you're like, whoa, what just happened? I can't no longer do what I was doing for fun. I can't jump around. I can't do this in neutral. She's just dictating things and she's making me play a certain way. That, that I think right there is the reason why a lot of people just do not like Jade. is Because when you play against her, it requires a lot of knowledge to know how to fight that kind of play style. Like you have to kind of become a fighting game player to beat her. 
Yeah, and you know what? Like coming in as a as a newer fighting game player, I feel like this is interesting. Like even when I was first getting into fighting games, I think one of the hardest uh, styles to deal with at first when you're first coming in is that like defensive wall style. Like they're kind of waiting for you to yep. jump, and which is what like Jade is. That. You said what? No, I said yep. Which is what Jade is. Yeah, and um, how do you think, uh, I mean, see, this is where the commitment comes in. Like you were just saying, as a fighting game player, like if you're going to be a committed fighting game player, it's getting around a style like that is, is you know, that right there, you know, that really separates, you know, if you're going to really get into the game or are you just going to stay casual? Because if you want to really get into a fighting game, a style like that, you have to really put the time in. Yeah. Because... You, you you can't just go in and just not know the timing of some of this shit going against like a wall like that, like a character that can just kind of sit back, they can throw something, they can kind of... Just dictate the whole match. You have to pretty much submit and concede and play her game. And a lot of people do not want to do that. They do not want to do that. Yes, and I don't know if it's the... the like you were saying, like just the, the whole culture change is like nobody... And and that might be because of the way they make the games now. Like I feel like when a newer fighting game comes out, uh, I don't know. It, I just feel like the defensive style, like you can't really play that as much as uh, previous games. And I don't know is that because it's more watered down, or is it just because the player base is just uh, you know that that's just not the style of this, this up. I think it's a little bit of many things i think the community or players are s slightly influences the 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 developers to not to try and stay away from styles like that because of how much negative attention they bring so that's why in mk11 you don't really have characters like jade like you have i'd say there's a few of them you know you have like jade cetron sindel you know characters that do that yeah but ultimately what you see is these characters even though i see on tier list sindel's like bottom tier but she's still like top five most complained about is because they have a certain play style where you have to concede submit and play their game and a lot of people just do not want to do that they don't like that you know they want to play robocop they want to play rambo and they want to do their thing and against every character but against some of these characters you just can't you have to play their game you have to let them dictate you have to slowly inch your way in you have to play on their terms and you have to make the best out of it to try and beat them and i think that is what makes people go like you know what this is not fun me having to play a certain way to fight that i don't want that and like like denzel said with jay like you need to have a lot of this awareness against her you need to have her air boomerang angles down when you can jump you need to be very conscious of okay if you're close to her and she does a low projectile to know that if you're reading it you can jump but if you're mid or far then you can obviously short hop it easier or do moves to get around it all this stuff all this stuff is very like in-depth knowledge stuff even though it sounds basic like being able to just be aware of her down four presence in the range and being able to whiff punish all of these things that's very advanced stuff like that's when you're really getting into a fighting game and breaking it down and playing it and you're kind of like ascending the past the casual point into becoming like you know one of the better players at getting you know, better at the game and i just feel like a lot of people never get to break through that shell because they don't like how some of these characters make them play so they don't want to put in the effort to play a matchup a certain way or play against someone that's dictating it and that's i think that's why like denzel said slowly as fighting get made there's less and less characters like that like in mk9 oh dude there were a lot of characters that did what i just explained like i'd say like almost half the cast had characters that would dictate neutral do this and that and you have to play their game but in mk11 they kind of toned a lot of that down and you really only see what characters like jade such on sindel maybe robocop in some matchups and a couple others but that's about it like a lot of characters you don't really have to play a certain way against them so it seems like it seems like a lot of people now are less, less willing to put in the time to figure out how to get their opponent's character to hang themselves and they're more concerned with why can't I just do what I want to do and the solution in a lot of cases isn't to grind the matchup it's to tell the developer fix this matchup so I can play the way that I want to play you know, and I think that was access that people didn't used to have. I mean, back in the arcade era, you couldn't go play the arcade and then be like, listen, like Capcom, like, I don't like this matchup. 
you need to change this so that I can play it how I want to play. It was just like, deal with it. And so, you know, if you couldn't figure it out, you had to ask someone, how do I get around this? Because the developer was for sure not going to release a patch the next week to fix the matchup to make it easier for you to play. Yeah, but I don't like, how is that full fulfilling to anybody? Like, let's say Jade gets nerfed in a mystery patch that's not going to happen. How would that make you better at the game? That wouldn't. I would just remove something that you were struggling with that could have made you better in the long run, but you took it for granted and now it's not there anymore. It could have been a skill set that you could have, you know, sharpened up and work on. Now that's gone. To me, like, when a character gets nerfed and then I can beat them all of a sudden, that doesn't make me all of a sudden feel like I'm better now and that I'm having more fun. That just feels like, you know, why? I don't know. I guess people are different. I guess people just don't want to deal with stuff and they want it gone. But when I look at it, I feel like when you do something like that, it doesn't help people improve and get better at a game. You need to have different playstyles like Jade and stuff to be there. So that way people that like that kind of playstyle can use them. And it also gives other people different playstyles to play against to sharpen up you know, their whole skill at, at, at a game. So speaking of different playstyles, that's, that's another topic that I want to bring up and ask everybody about um, is Sonic's tweet. So uh, for anyone who doesn't know, Sonic, basically someone made a tweet and said, all right, you're complaining about Stride, but MK11 was figured out day one, right? Basically, there's no growth. And I think he posted a picture of Baraka strings and was like, look, Baraka only has this many strings. How much stuff can you figure out with this? And Sonic quoted the tweet, tweet and replied and said, I see this argument a lot too. And what is it with these takes? Literally, you can customize your character, do whatever you want them to do, custom moves, which vastly changes how you approach the character. Even Braca, new metas and loadouts are still being developed to this day. And one example of that I can think of recently was Rewind, right? Almost everyone who was playing Kano was playing Kano a certain way. And Cetrion has been one of the most oppressive characters of at least the last year or so, maybe a little longer. And one of the things that's so impressive about her is that even on block, she keeps ending her pressure at this distance where it's like you can't touch her. You have to make a move to get to her, and you have to make a read because you can get blown up. Right? She's almost never at point blank. If you block a tornado or whatever, she's in her happy range. And so Rewind figured out, hey, like almost nobody is using biomagnetic pool with Kano, but if I put the biomagnetic pool it actually cuts into that range where she likes to be. And all of a sudden, half of her mind games don't work because now the Cetrion player has to be aware that I can vacuum her in from that range that she likes to be at on autopilot. So that's one example that I can think of where someone made an unconventional choice in a loadout that actually changed a lot of matchups. And Rewind ever since then has been playing a ton of Kano and giving most of the Cetrion's trouble. So... I wanted to ask you guys, like, is this true what people say that MK11 has basically figured out all the variations and figured Wait, out? Wait, someone said that they posted a picture of Baraka's move list? I don't understand. What does that mean? They posted a picture of his strings? Yeah, they, they, did, they took a screenshot in practice mode. Of Baraka's strings. Of Baraka's strings, and they were like... They okay, what does that mean? Them. They counted them. They, they went to the, the move list. They went to his strings, and they counted the strings, and they were like, look, there's only nine strings, so this character can't have any depth. That was basically the talking point. That's like me going to MK9, taking a picture of Baraka's strings in that game, because he had, like, over 20 strings in MK9, and going like, look, bro, look at all this depth. <laughs> Most of those strings are garbage. He, he only used, like, three strings in MK9. In MK11, even though Baraka only has nine strings... Basically, all of them serve a purpose. Like they're pretty well formatted strings. Like all, all of, all, pretty much all of them have a use. Four, 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 two, one, 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 two, one, two, back three. Like almost all of them. That's a horrible example. That he chose literally the worst character to show off strings being useless in in an image. Exactly. So that's why I want to ask you guys. Right? There's actually a lot of stuff coming up. Right? There's Evo coming up. With the new finals in November, where there's now like some serious money on the line. All right. In addition to that, CEO pretty much completely booked up. There are other tournaments coming up, like Vandy's running KIT and stuff like that. So, given that we're actually going to see a lot of like offline MK action, 
do you guys agree with this notion that MK11 is pretty much figured out and it's not going to evolve? Or do you agree with Sonic that actually maybe people haven't been trying a lot of these loadouts? They actually haven't labbed a lot of stuff, and there's still a lot of room to grow, even without like further support for the game. Okay, I have a hot take regarding that. Right now, take anybody's tier list currently, right now, today, August 4th, 2021. Take any tier list made today or before. I guarantee you, a year from now, these tier lists will look different with some characters. I agree. What do you guys think? Denzel, what do you think? Zafox, Denzel, do you guys think any character will be move up or down in the future? Even though there's no patches coming? Uh, I mean, I think there definitely will be some characters that'll probably move up as people just continue to play that like the game. There's always something that's going to get figured out because you can never really figure everything out in a fighting game. That's the, that's the fun thing about any fighting game. There's never, oh, okay, I just figured everything out. That, that's just not true. It's with any game. That's the best. One of the best things about fighting games is you just you'll never figure you you'll never know if you've ever figured everything out. Like it's like a never ending mystery, bro. Like <laughs> I don't think like for somebody to say that a game is figured out or they bring some character, that's just like that toxic that's the type of shit that we just can't like I feel like as a community we gotta just like we got to, like, you know how there's a like, cancel culture shit? We got to start canceling motherfuckers. Like, <laughs> okay, chill. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hold up. One thing I don't understand is, how do these people have so much power? I don't, I don't, I, I'll never understand it. How do people that hate a game and dislike it have so much power? Do they just have, like, a cult behind them or what? I, I'll never understand that. Like, for someone to make a tweet going, like, MK11's figured out no depth, and this shit gets, like, a thousand retweets, who put them up on this pedestal to be them like the voice of reason yes everybody listen to this guy he knows exactly what he's talking about when it comes to mk11 having no depth and then you you go to his youtube channel watch his gameplay and it's the worst shit ever like he's doing sindel down to his half screen like bro like, how does this even happen oh, man. like either these people all really don't play the game or because something's weird dude something's up because have you ever seen some of these voice of reasons you go to watch their gameplay play the game and they they don't even know how to floss block projectors. I'm like, hold up. This is the dude that was telling me that this, this, and that when he doesn't even know how the basic foundation of the game works. Like, uh, to me, that's like so puzzling. Maybe it's just we're out today's time, we're outnumbered because back then it used to be, you know, there would be like people you would follow uh, that, you know, maybe know something about the game. But now it's like everyone and their mother and their grandparents have Twitter accounts and they all know everything about the game. Like, everybody and all, and all million of them know shit. So, I don't know, it could just be like a shift or something. Well, it's definitely easier to get clout from making a dismissive tweet about a game and having someone retweet it and a bunch of people be like, yeah, than it is to get clout from, like, competing and beating people. You know what I mean? Like, if you're new and you're like, wait a minute, like, I could grind out these matches and stuff like that and, like, put weeks and weeks and hours and hours and hours and hours in to get good... Or I could just make this tweet and be like, yeah, MK11 sucks. Like, it's been figured out day one, whatever. And, and get retweeted, like, top players and stuff like that. Like, liking my tweet. You know what I mean? And most people are like, why would I go through the struggle? Why would you get better if you could just ratio Ed Boon? <laughs> <laughs> like... <laughs> Hold on, Ed would know some stuff though. Have you ever seen him play MK Deception? There was gameplay footage of him. He knew shit with Scorpion. Did he, he really? was mixing? Yeah, he was doing nah. all heads and all. I'm like, okay, Ed Boone, I see you know the basics. <laughs> Bro, he was mixing. <sighs> yeah. All right, all right, guys. So I'm gonna wrap it up for now. Thank you guys so much for discussing. It's been a fun episode. Hope you guys enjoy and thanks for listening to episode 33 of the podcast. We'll see you guys next time. Yeah, and if you guys have like suggestions, comments, or whatever. Things you want to see, definitely like hit us up. Let us know either on Twitter or like in the comments here, or whatever. Like our ears are open, and we're down to hear like what you guys like. Yes, please do. Thanks again, everyone.